fans. My name is Clint Novak, and we are running just a few minutes late. I apologize for that in advance, but we have four of the, uh, I guess, are you guys all former uh, Great Coaster International interns now, or is there anybody that's currently on the intern team? I was here this summer, so I'm done now. Okay, so we have four uh, former uh, interns from Great Coasters International, and uh, this is going to be really exciting. We're going to be talking to them a little bit about uh, what it was like being an intern at uh, uh, Great Coasters International. We've also got some questions from uh, you guys as well, submitted by video and submitted uh, via uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook. And uh, yeah, so uh, without further ado, let's go around and introduce everybody. First, we've got uh, Adam, who I've uh, definitely talked to before. Adam, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Clint. Now, Adam, uh, where are you checking in from, and when were you an intern at GCI? I am in uh, Florence, Kentucky right now in our engineering office, in my office, and uh, I was a GCI intern in the spring of 2011. All right. And I work full time. you got such a comfy office. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? Just in case you know you're hungover and need to take a nap or something. Exactly. It's <laughs> once once you it's a, it's like a skyline chili hangover. Once you you know you have all that for lunch and you are not productive the rest of the day. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's almost like you've had it before. <laughs> uh, then we have Nick. Nick, how are you doing today? I'm great. Nick, you're very vertical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm on my phone right now. My computer does not like to work with Skype. Okay. Where are you located, and uh, when were you a GCI intern? I am currently in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was an intern this past month, the last month of my summer. Okay. And uh, what are you currently doing now? Um, I'm down here. I just started up my engineering classes this fall. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, up next, we have uh, Matt. Matt, how are we doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. <laughs> you, you don't. You don't have the. F is that your office? Are you in your office right now? Oh no, no, no? This is my uh, little apartment here. <laughs> oh, okay. This is an apartment, so uh, not as cozy as Adam's office. That we know that much, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, it's got the green hue. You know, look at the green walls. You know, it's got a nice <laughs> tone to it. <laughs> awesome and uh, when were you an intern and what are you doing now all right so i was an intern about a year ago i think yeah spring 2015 uh, and now i work full-time for zamperla i live in new jersey very cool it, it, do you uh do you ever go to the uh, uh uh lunar park out there then oh of course of course yeah. <laughs> that's Regularly. like your, your guys' <laughs> playground <laughs> Yeah, it's part of the job. <laughs> awesome, awesome. We'll talk a little bit about that in a, a little bit. And then uh, last but not least, uh, we have Will. How are you doing, Will? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, when were you an intern, and uh, where are you at now? Uh, I was an intern just this past summer for the last three months, and uh, right now I'm in Murray, Kentucky, finishing up my senior year uh, at Murray State University. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, welcome, guys. Thank you guys very much for coming on. Uh, we're just going to have a laid-back conversation for a little uh, uh, a half hour or so. We'll take some uh, questions, of course, from the, uh, the chat room. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it should, be, uh, should be a lot of fun. Let's talk a little bit first. What was it like? Uh, first of all, how badly did you want to be an intern at Great Coasters? Like, was this something that you just did because of uh, school? Or was it something that, you know, you had dreams and aspirations of well before, uh, you know, getting into uh, college? I don't think anybody got into this by accident. I think every everybody that, that wanted to be an intern really fought to get there. I mean, we have over 300 resumes that we get a year of people just wanting internships and uh, myself included these other three guys were obviously top of that list and and I mean there's a reason for it I mean they they fought to be here yeah I mean I've wanted to be uh, in the roller coaster just uh, in that manufacturing aspect of it and I wanted to be in that industry since I was a little kid you know growing up Riding them and playing roller coaster tycoon, like of course that's what you want to do. But you know, once you get all of that technical experience behind your back, it starts to be a real thing that you could actually do, and you just got to go out and try to get it. Yeah, I went. I went down to a couple of uh, 
conferences in the past few months uh, down in Orlando and then with Great Coasters, FredEx in Pennsylvania, uh, just trying to meet as many people as I could. And uh, the internship, uh, while it was only a month long because it you know, had to fit into my summer schedule for school and everything, but um, it, it presented itself well and it was definitely something that I've been looking for. Awesome. Do uh, any of you guys play Roller Coaster Tycoon currently? Are you guys playing uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon World? <laughs> yeah, every day, Clint. Every day. <laughs> every day. I still, I still play the original. Five. You still play the ori- still like original, like one or like two or three? Uh, I'm between one and two. You know, I, I like both of them equally, so I switch between the two. <laughs> All right. Every once in a while. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I love World. I love World. Uh, I was reading the reviews online. It was, you know, it's in the, it's not, it's not even called beta. It's, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, early pre- access. Yeah, early access. And uh, all the reviews were horrible about it. And there are some glitches and some and, and some bugs in it. But, uh, man, it's great. I love it. So, way better than 3 was. I like it. All right. Uh, yeah. Our, first, uh, our yeah. first question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, in, in terms of building coasters, I certainly find it a lot more challenging to build them in, in, in the simulator than in the real world sometimes. Because <laughs> you go back and you ride the POV, and it was like, that, that, that needs to be smoothed out a little bit. Why is that not smoother? That's oh, yeah, <laughs> annoying. It is so annoying. So I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so you sit there, and there's that little bump in there, and it's like, I don't want that bump, but there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, well, uh, before we get into the next question, uh, we have one that was submitted by uh, one of our fans, and I figured we'd get this one out of the way quick because uh, it has uh, something to do with uh, another intern uh, in the group. So let's uh, let's get that uh, question from Mr. Reese Adkins. How's it going, everybody? Former In The Loop co-host Reese Adkins here. I have uh, some very important questions for tonight's GCI intern show. But first, I just want to announce to everybody who's upset about the King's Dominion announcement, I, for one, will be on the first cycle of Sally's Seaplane on opening day 2017. I'm very excited about that. But my question is for the GCI interns and I really just want to know what is it like to work with Adam House I mean Adam House is such a legend I would be excited to work with Adam House I'm a you know words can't even describe how much I love Adam House what is it like working with Adam House don't forget about Randall (laughs) and that is uh, uh, former co-host Reese Adkins so what is it like uh, working with Adam House did you guys work directly with him At least three of us. Um, <laughs> Will and Nick got to experience Adam for a little bit. Adam's been out of the country a lot, so I don't think either of them got to see too much of him. But uh, I work with Adam pretty much every day, and he's definitely an interesting character. Um, <laughs> I wore my, my U of L shirt today just, just in honor of Adam because I know with the sports team he's hurting a little bit, but... Uh, <laughs> We always make make we always make up for it somehow. We like to joke around and things, but Adam's a great guy to work with. He's a good boss, keeps us all in line, and and certainly brings a little bit of humor to the work environment every day. Yeah, I definitely always look. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. It's been like the short time that I, you know, got to be in the same office with him. He was right across the way, and. I don't know. He would always make the job just seem more fun than it probably could have been because every time he got angry, he would just start talking to himself and just, just uh, he tried to stay calm, but man, he was he was just a character. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I never got to really be face-to-face with him during my internship, but every time I got a call from the Kentucky office, it was definitely uh, something to look forward to. <laughs> or if there was ever a Skype call between the two offices and He'd be wearing some interesting jacket with like a bear head on the hood or something, and it was always great. <laughs> uh, I just love the story of him uh, with his, his Skyline chili, his hot sauce that he, he loved so much because uh, they <laughs> changed the hot sauce and he didn't like the new stuff very much. So he brought his own uh, gallon jug of hot sauce to Skyline with him the next time we went. <laughs> 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 That's that's not an exaggeration. We, I mean, we eat Skyline <laughs> at least once a week. So if, if you eat there 52 times a year, you really get to know those people, and they have a lot of respect for you. So when little things change and it upsets you, and they can tell it upsets you, they're like, oh, here, 
here's a peace offering, here's a gallon of Skyline hot sauce. To fill <laughs> <her."> uh, <laughs> Now, it's, what what is the uh, awesome. what is the closest skyline to your office there? Well, we have a skyline right down the street from the office, but we don't ever go there. We oh, you call it actually uh, ghetto skyline is what we call it, just because <laughs> the, the food isn't nearly as good. So we drive about fifteen minutes away to go to the the one that we like. Okay. We know the owner and everything. They're they're, they're always great to us. They know exactly what we're going to order as soon as we walk in the door and everything. They always look at me because I change it up every week. So they always look at me like, I don't know, what's he going to order today? Burritos, <laughs> fries, conies, whatever. No, all right, very cool. <laughs> um, you know, th- it, this is my uh, this is my Adam House story for the week. Uh, Obviously, uh, being uh, the, I guess, the media, uh, we don't have the same rapport we used to before, uh, you know, he uh, got into the big, big wig position he's in now. And uh, <clears throat> now I message him all the time, but he can never tell me anything. So he never, ta- he never talks to me about, you know, King's Island stuff until <laughs> I'm watching the live feed and he walks on stage. And I'm like, that bastard, he didn't tell me. Um, <laughs> so uh, a couple of days before King's Dominion announced uh, something was going on. And uh, obviously, everybody knows Hurler's down, and there's something going on. And I said, I, I figured I'd fish fish around, so I messaged him saying, "Hey, I heard you're in town today. It was the day before. It was, it was Friday. I said, "Hey, I heard you're in town. Uh, we should uh, we should get together." And he messaged me, he goes, "You're in Cincinnati?" And I said, "Oh no, I heard you were in uh, you're you were in uh, Virginia for the announcement tomorrow." And he. Um, <laughs> He said uh, that is incorrect, and I said, "Oh, I must have meant Alan from uh, from our uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Construction. You guys are right next to each other in my phone, so I, I get it confused sometimes." So, but uh, he has he never responded Ouch. back to that one. <laughs> Ouch, that hurts, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> it, had to, it has to be one of them, right? It, it's one of the two. I, I'm not I'm not getting to pick which one I want. The Kings Dominion gets to do that. Cedar Cedar Fair. Just say what, whatever Kings Dominion does. I hope it stays a wood coaster. And I hope it. I hope it gets better. Yes, uh, Those you know classic rides that they have. I uh, I am really excited that we have uh, Invader going in down the street. Uh, I would have been more excited if it was called Battle Clash, but we're not going to go there. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm really excited for King's Island. You guys uh, getting the coaster up there, and that's really cool because it's kind of right in your backyard there. So Definitely. I mean, I that's the one I'm most excited for, not just because it's my project, but just because it is. It's at our home park. Uh, it took a lot of effort to get that ride into that park, and uh, especially since they already had three other wooden roller coasters or four other wooden roller coasters. So, you know, everyone thinks, okay, this is just going to be another beast, but it's really not. I, I, I think it'll be a totally different ride experience than the beast, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be something that, that everybody's going to in, enjoy. I mean, it's not this big, huge, 300-foot-tall inverting wooden roller coaster, but it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Exactly. And we don't know what's in the shed. What's in the shed? <laughs> so don't even ask. Okay, well, that's three of the questions right there. Okay, right off the top. Don't even have to ask them. Um, Matt, let's talk a little bit about Simperla. Uh, you work over at sure. Simperla there. Now, I uh, work at Central Park Funland, which is a uh, small FEC in Fredericksburg, Virginia. We are currently looking for a ride, and I actually uh, contacted Simperla about one of the rides that you guys have. And unfortunately, uh, your production timeline won't meet our needs uh, for a ride next year. See, oh no! <laughs> yeah, being a guy build, uh, buying his first ride, I've never purchased a ride before. So I'm, uh, you know, it's fall of the year before we're buying the ride. Oh, let's start. Uh, let's start talking to these guys. No, I should have been doing that two years ago. Is what I should have been doing. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, the uh, I forget what the name of the ride is. It's. Uh, uh, it, it has the big, uh, I think they have uh, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. It's a circular ride uh, that starts, uh, loads everybody on the ground and then makes its way kind of like an enterprise, but uh, the seats are like uh, like inverted seats almost. Oh. Right, right. That's the Endeavor. Yeah, that's Endeavor, basically yes. our form of the enterprise. Yeah, yeah. It looks so cool. The light package on that thing looks amazing. Yeah, it's it's really great. I mean, for me, I, it's uh, funny working for Zamperla because, you know, people typically think of us as more of like a, a flat ride company, but we do a little bit of everything. And for me, I never uh, really, I guess, thought too much about like, you know, flat rides before I came to Zamperla. Um, and after riding the Endeavor and riding a lot of our rides, I just realized, you know, like you could really uh, change the industry or really come up with something new with a lot of these flat rides. It's just... Uh, it's a whole different world out there. <laughs> All right. What do you what do you do at Simperla now? 
Um, so I work for their U.S. office. Their main office is actually in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, so I basically work with all U.S. operations with uh, anything from technical service to ride installs, actually going in the field, um, just uh, handling the customers, uh, the, the customers from the point after the sale is basically my job. <laughs> all right. All right. And how did uh, how did uh, your internship at uh, GCI, uh, you know, uh, uh, get you into uh, that that position at Zimperla? How did it uh, how did it uh, mold you into the person you are today there? Oh, well, um, I'd say just the uh, the mix of experiences that you get being in in a ride manufacturer. I mean, you could be doing anything from assembling parts for a car or uh, like I know some of the interns, other interns, you know, worked on like the structure of a ride or on the CAD drawings, uh, just the variety of things that you do at a manufacturer, since most of them are kind of small companies, uh, being able to say that you had that broad experience, especially in the, in the industry really, uh, really was what helped me, I think for sure. All right. And, uh, for the guys who are still in college, what do you guys hope to do in the future? I mean, I'd love to go back to Great Coasters if they'd have me, but uh, anything really in the industry would be would be my dream, honestly. I second that. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could give you guys jobs as uh, as leads at Funland uh, tomorrow, so you guys could start. That's, that's the industry right there. So, um, so uh, hey, here's another question: uh, Coaster Lab uh, is asking uh, for those going into college, uh, what should they pursue to get where you guys are now? Wow. Um, I think it depends on what part of the industry you want to be in. Um, I mean, a lot of people think mechanical, and that's how you get into roller coasters, and that's, that's not always true. I'm a civil guy myself. Um, so, I mean, there, there are two fields right there, but a lot something a lot of people don't think about, electrical engineers. Um, I'll use Brian and Ann at uh, IOE. You know, Brian's an electrical engineer. It's fire trucks going by, sorry. Um <laughs> They, they actually have probably the best job. They program the ride, and then they just have an ERT session every single time a new you know a new ride opens. They get to camp out on it for a couple weeks and ride it all through the night if they want. So they might have a few hundred laps on the thing before any other human being rides the ride. So I mean, there's you don't have to be a mechanical or a structures guy. I mean, there are there are other things, but those are kind of the two most prominent ones there are other ways in the industry that you know maybe you don't want to design rides maybe you just want to run your own park and you could start at the park hall and work that way there are a lot of people that start with engineering and realize this isn't the way i want to go you know it's too much office work for me i want to be out where the people are have a lot more fun and i could i could totally see going that path i mean that would be a lot of fun being out you actually see you interact with all the people you could see the smiles and smell the smells and feel like you really have accomplished something and not just played roller coaster tycoon all day <laughs> <laughs> any other advice yeah i know i uh i read this somewhere else actually before i uh got into my major in college but uh basically the thought of just uh it seems kind of kind of broad or bland but just Pursuing what you enjoy before you decide what in the industry you want to do. Like, if there's a specific thing in a major, a specific area that you really enjoy um, outside of the theme park industry, like a specific craft, uh, there's always uh, there's always a way to find a way. Uh, like, use that in the industry. I mean, you could be anything from, you know, doing the theming for a ride. You know, you could be like an interior designer or if you want to do like what we're doing, you know, you could do engineering. Um, I know in my job specifically, I've done a whole variety of things. I've done like some concrete work, so, so some civil, you know, even though I'm a mechanical engineer. So uh, really, there's a whole bunch of different areas you could go into with the industry. Yeah, awesome. and some advice that I would have is just like get into the industry any way you can early on. Um, like you don't have to start out with an internship at a roller coaster company. Like I worked uh, at Kings Island the last two summers before this one. So even just getting the experience of learning about rides and learning about how a park operates, like that's really helpful in just getting your foot in the door. 
kind of piggyback off that about getting in early. Um, the other thing that we always recommend is going down to the IAPA trade show every year. You know, that is that is where the industry goes, and they are there to basically do business. But at the same time, it's a very convenient place for somebody that wants to get into the industry to go down and, and prove that they are different than everyone else. They're worth talking to. And we recommend Thursday and Friday going down because that's towards the end of the week of the show. And there aren't as many meetings scheduled, so it's a little bit easier to approach companies. Um, I know my first IAPA, that was six years ago. There were several companies I was a little too intimidated by, which, you know, Intimate was one, B&M definitely was one of the other ones. But, um, you know, a, a lot of them are very welcoming. You know, you come in and you talk with them for a few minutes and, and recognize, you know, if, if the conversation's over, then you leave on a high note or, or if not, you can keep talking to them. So it's, I, it's, it's really neat. I, as experience. a fan, I'm always amazed at the B&M booth because they build great, uh, great steel coasters and uh, they're always busy building coasters, yet their booth is never all that busy. Like Walter's always standing there just waiting uh, to uh, chat with people and, and, really? and he's uh, very willing to chat with you when you come up. His English is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, great, but uh, he never really has an issue talking to people when, the, when you come up. And then there's the guys over at Great Coasters who you can't talk to ever because they're always in meetings all day, so. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, um, no, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, being on this side of the industry and and not on the side of that you guys are on, and that's anyone at any part of the industry you want to go into, it's always great just to go down and uh, walk around and talk to people and network with people and go to events, uh, you know, hang out at night with people. It, it, it's just a great overall experience. I've been doing it. I don't even know ten years or so, and. Uh, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. I won't. I, I don't. I never want to miss a year. I always want to be down there, and uh, it's a lot of work, uh, you know, doing what we do. But uh, it's it's also a lot of fun meeting everybody and, and getting to hang out. So work hard and play hard, right? There you play. go. There you go. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's hear who's next. We got uh, RC Maker says, uh, "What kind, if any, roller coaster records uh, do you think uh, GCI could break one day?" Hmm. Interesting. I, I guess uh -huh. this is one of those questions that always comes up that could just be, it depends on how much money you're willing to spend. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, we do wooden roller coasters, so of course there's there's a natural limitation to how big or how fast something can go. I think Son of Beast and, and some of the early 90s era din coasters kind of proved that. But um, I don't know. I... I I'd be willing to try whatever anyone wanted. I mean, we're, we're obviously building these monster coasters over in China, but uh, it'd be really cool to see one in the United States that, that was more accessible for most people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. Definitely amazing. Uh, how about this one? Uh, oh, this one's going to be an easy one for you guys. Uh, Shane says, uh, what are your re uh, job responsibilities? What's your average day work like? Oh. I don't think there is any such, <laughs> no. And these guys can totally attest to that. There, There is not an average day in any way, shape, or form. And, and that's really what I love about this industry is it's so dynamic. And, Matt, you probably experienced it. You've kind of touched on it a little bit. Every single day is different. And with small companies, which amusement industry companies tend to be, you know, it's wherever wherever you're needed. You know, there are a lot of times I might be working with something mechanical, might be working with something structural or working with a contract. You know, it's it's up to the hour is constantly different. It's great. It's very rewarding to to be able to have something so diverse. Yeah, I, I totally... I, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Um, All right. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um I was only there for, for four weeks in the engineering office, um, and it, it's true, there's no typical day, because I would come in thinking I was going to be checking drawings one day, and I would end up, you know, doing something with a layout, or just there's, you know, in, in the four weeks, I don't think I did the same thing more than two days in a row without being put on a new task the next day, and it was a lot of fun, because there was, you know, so much to learn, and I know that I only touched the surface of it but there there is no really typical day yeah 
Awesome. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Adam was saying. I mean, one day I might be, you know, heading out to Coney Island to do some test runs on the Thunderbolt, or the next day I might be back in the office doing a CAD drawing for, you know, a placement for a new ride or something of that sort. So it really, it really changes every day for sure. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, we're coming up to the end of our half hour here. Is there any uh, closing remarks you'd want to make? I, I did have one more question, I guess, uh, uh, for Adam. Uh, Ryan wants to know how uh, construction is coming along on uh, Inv in Invader and uh, Mystic Timbers. Both are coming along, Clint. I, I think we're going to start seeing vents stood here soon. Both rides have vents built. We're just waiting for the foundation to get strong enough and, and get complete enough that it's worth our time to start standing. So keep an eye on the Mystic Timbers webcam, which is now live. And uh, hopefully somebody's dropping by Bush Gardens and taking some <laughs> photos. That's that's probably the most speedy uh, photo updates you'll get from that project. But I, I think the park's been doing a, a decent job of getting, getting updates through there as well. So keep an eye on their social media channels as well. And I always try and and uh, you know, retweet or, or repost things that are put up on on social media if I find them. But but I think the fans with any project probably do a better job of taking pictures than than our job foreman and and, and some of our carpenters. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you guys very much for stopping by, talking to uh, some of the people in the industry who may be looking at breaking into the industry. Uh, I know that uh, we've had this conversation a few times before, but it's always good to uh, uh, get people involved and tell them how they can uh, uh, you know, uh, make their way in. And there's so many different places to do it. Operations, ownership, uh, you know, building stuff, uh, running stuff. Uh, you know, all kind of designing stuff. So it's 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 a huge industry, and uh, it's fun uh, to have you guys in and, and to talk a little bit about uh, what you guys are doing. Yeah, well, thank you very Definitely much. Definitely appreciate it. All <laughs> right, Clint. All right, guys. Well, that does it for the show. My name is Clint.